This question is about atoms. Atoms contain three types of particle, electrons, neutrons and protons. Which particle has no electrical charge? Well, in an atom, the three types of particle are found in two different places. There is the centre of the atom, which is called the nucleus, and that is where we find the positive protons and the neutral neutrons, and the electrons orbit the nucleus in rings which are known as shells or energy levels. And as I was describing it there, I listed the fact that protons were positively charged, and we might write plus one, and electrons are negatively charged, or we might write minus one. And neutrons are neutral, they have no charge. That might be a helpful way for you to remember the fact that the neutron is neutral. And so neutron is the correct answer here. Which particles have the same relative mass? Now, relative mass is a way to describe the mass of particles compared to each other, which is really useful because we don't need to know how heavy each of these particles are individually, but we're comparing them to each other. And so you need to remember that the mass of an atom is found in its nucleus, which means it's contained within the neutrons and the protons. And neutrons and protons have got the same mass as each other. And so we say that their relative masses are one and one. That means that if we had a really, really, really small seesaw and we had a neutron on one end of a seesaw and a proton on the other end of the seesaw, this seesaw would be balanced because they have the same relative mass. And so the correct answer here is the final option of a neutron and a proton. Electrons, in contrast, have a relative mass of very, very close to zero. Some books might quote it as zero. Other books might quote it as being very small. It is about 2,000 times smaller than neutrons and protons. And so since no element has 2,000 electrons, we can consider its mass to be zero. The formula of a compound is N2O. How many of each type of atom are in one molecule of N2O? Well, the formula of a compound has two distinct features. It has the symbols for the elements that are in the compound, and it might also have some numbers. The symbols tell you which elements you've got present. So we've got a capital N here for nitrogen and a capital O for oxygen. We might see some lowercase letters, but it's the capital letters that we are interested in because each element has its own unique capital letter, possibly paired with a lowercase letter. And then we have numbers in a formula and the numbers belong to the previous element in the formula and they are referred to as multipliers so they multiply that previous element by whatever number they are. So in the formula N2O the little 2 comes after the nitrogen so it belongs to the nitrogen and so that means we have got two atoms of nitrogen which we can write as a digit or as the word 2. And since there is no number after the capital O for oxygen, that means we only have one atom of oxygen, which again we could write as a digit or as the word. We don't write ones as part of a formula. If there is no number after an element symbol, that means there is one of that particular element. This is the same for other formulae as well, more common ones than N2O. We might have H2O, where that 2 belongs to the hydrogen, meaning two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, or CH4 for methane, where the 4 belongs to the hydrogen. So we have one atom of carbon and four atoms of hydrogen. An atom of element Z contains three electrons, four neutrons and three protons. Give the name of element Z, use the periodic table to help you. The periodic table shows us elements with three distinct features. We have the symbol, which for now I'm just going to use as Z, and we have the atomic brackets proton number at the bottom, which we don't know yet, and we have the mass number at the top, which we also don't know yet. Now, the mass number is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. So for element Z, it is three protons plus four neutrons, which gives us the mass number of seven. 
The atomic bracket proton number tells us, unsurprisingly, the number of protons in an atom. So we've been told that element Z has got three protons, which means it will have an atomic number of three. And it's actually the atomic number which gives an element its identity, because all of the atoms of a particular element will have the same number of protons. So to unlock this question, we need to look in the periodic table for the element with an atomic number of three, and we find out that this is the element lithium. It's important that we write the word lithium because we've been asked to give the name rather than the symbol. Complete the figure below to show the position of the particles in an atom of element Z. And we've been given some particular symbols that we need to use for each of the particles. There are four marks available here and there are only three types of particles. So that means one of them must be worth two marks. First of all, we need to remember that the neutrons and the protons are found in the nucleus and the electrons are found in shells. So when we're placing our particles, it's important that we remember that. And the nucleus is this circle at the center of the atom. Currently, it doesn't have anything in it. We need to put the protons and the neutrons into there. We've been told to put the neutrons in as filled in circles. And so we need to put four filled in circles into the nucleus at the center of this atom. And that gets us our first mark of the four. And then we need to put three protons also into the nucleus as three circles that are not filled in. And that gets us our second mark. For the third mark, we need to put three electrons, shown as crosses, somewhere into the shells. They're showing us two shells here, which actually is really helpful. Because what you need to remember is the first electron shell can hold up to two electrons and then it is full. And we should fill in the electron shells, starting with the innermost shell and then filling that up and working outwards. And since we have got three electrons that we need to show, we need to put two electrons into the first shell, shown as crosses, and then it is full. And then we work our way out to the next shell. And the second shell can hold up to eight electrons before it is filled. And since we need to put three electrons in in total, we actually only have one electron left. And so that third electron needs to go into the second available shell. And so we might say we've got an electronic structure of two comma one, where we've got two electrons shown as crosses in the first shell and one electron in the second shell. 